everyone. Um, I've been sitting where you've been, where you are sitting uh, for many hours, and uh, I did not predict I'd be on this side of the stage. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here at SOAS because SOAS equipped me with the critical um, understanding of power, of international relations, of the interconnectedness uh, of the political and the legal uh, on the international stage. And this is what is playing out so obviously in this case. Uh, the first thing I think you should know is that whatever you think of Julian is guaranteed to be incorrect. And I'll tell you why. There has been a deliberate, orchestrated information war around Julian and WikiLeaks. This is not just uh, something I am uh, positing there. Uh, there is a report which we, you should all read, a 7,500 word investigative report, three national security reporters, American, um, which was published in September last year which laid out the CIA's attack plan against WikiLeaks. And this attack plan included the presentation of what they called sketches and options for executing Julian in London, killing him, kidnapping him, renditioning him, but also a large-scale disinformation campaign, which was carried out. Uh, and there are many stories uh, which were planted. This, is, um, this, this investigation spoke to over 30 uh, US officials, named and unnamed, including very senior people in the CIA and the National Security Council which confirmed that Julian's assassination was discussed at the highest levels of the Trump administration in the White House, that Mike Pompeo personally was ordering plans to assassinate Julian. Our six months old baby was targeted for his DNA. Julian's lawyers meetings with him were spied on. And when I say spied on, it's not just incidentally, there was a camera in the room there were microphones stuck on the uh, fire extinguishers and audio recordings extracted every 12 hours and then physically transported to the United States. Julian's entire legal correspondence with his lawyers that he had had for, uh, since he got to the UK, uh, nine years worth of, of privileged, protected, confidential information was stolen and shipped off, stolen from Julian, should be protected. It's his legal advice, um, was shipped to the United States as well. There is, there are so many aspects to this case, not just the fact that Julian is being prosecuted for publishing evidence of war crimes. What you just saw was a war crime. Those people were good Samaritans who were rescuing a dying man. That man in the, in the van was taking his children to school and he stopped his van because he saw a man was dying on the curb and then they killed him. That is a war crime. And the people who were flying that helicopter, who were shooting, the US military knows who they are. In fact, we could probably find out who they are. But that's not a secret. There's a deliberate decision to cover up that war crime. Julian is in prison because the US is covering up its war crimes, because it's not prosecuting uh, its own um, war criminals, 
And that goes up to the highest level of government. Julian exposed the Iraq war. He exposed the Afghan war. He exposed torture and rendition, including the complicity of European countries in that torture and rendition. And what we are seeing here is a political persecution of a publisher for publishing the truth. And the courts are being used, are being instrumentalized to persecute a journalist. I say a journalist, he is a journalist. He has been a journalist uh, for since 2007 at least. He holds journalist uh, union credentials. He publishes articles. He does interviews. He is a journalist. A journalist is jailed, is imprisoned in the United Kingdom a few miles from where we're sitting right now because he published the truth exposing a superpower that was killing innocent civilians. This is what it's about. Thank you very much, Scott. Thanks very much.